What up my channel? Today I'm going to be discussing being black on booktube and on bookstagram, the worldwide protests over the murder of George Floyd, and other recent events impacting black lives. <laughs> Some of you may know that I do live in Minneapolis, Minnesota, which is the place where George Floyd unfortunately was murdered. Since his murder, I have been going out and protesting and documenting all of the protest efforts on Instagram, um, largely because the media was not reporting our peaceful protests. They were only reporting on looters. The media had largely taken control of the narrative and was obscuring some of the really beautiful types of resistance that the citizens of Minneapolis were making sure happened. And so it was really important to me that I be able to document document my experience being a part of that and I was so so overwhelmed in the most touching way by all of your love and support as I did that so thank you from the bottom of my heart a lot of you may have seen the Instagram TV video that I filmed after being tear gassed by police during a peaceful protest one of the frustrating things about being black in America is that you know people won't believe you and I know that people wouldn't have believed me if I had said that I got tear gassed at a peaceful protest and didn't have video evidence of it. And it's the same thing with George Floyd's murder. Nobody, nobody would have believed black people if they had said, hey, I watched this cop kneel on a man's neck for nine minutes until he died. People wouldn't believe that. And similarly, I know that people wouldn't believe me when I say, hey, I got tear gassed. They tear gassed peaceful protesters, they shot us with rubber bullets while our hands were in the air and we were saying, don't shoot. Part of the most frustrating thing about not just the situation, but being black every day in this country is not being believed. Non-black people continuously challenging our own experiences that we've lived with our own eyes and saying, no, that didn't happen. Oh, it couldn't possibly have happened. There's no way, I just can't believe it. People who are non-black consistently failing to believe the things that we experience. Even though they logically know that there is a history and a continuation of systems of oppression that hurt black people the most in this country. Anyway, I'm digressing, but I'm just trying to say, instead of constantly expecting that black people be responsible for providing proof, for carrying the burden of proof, just believe us when we say we experience the things we say we experience. I will leave the video linked down below if you are interested in watching it. I can't. If you've seen it, you know that I broke down in the video. I was, I can't remember having cried harder in my life. I can't remember. <sighs> After I filmed that video, I received a call from my father um, and my aunt. So backstory, my uncle has adopted me. And so when I say my dad and my aunt, I'm talking about my adoptive dad and my aunt. So after I filmed that video, I received a call from my aunt and my dad. And you know, my father was in tears. It was definitely at the height of the protest. And he said, I don't care what I have to do, but I need you to get on a plane and I need you to come here to Texas where they live. And he's like, please, I just want to protect you. He said this thing that I'll never forget. He said, I know that you're Wonder Woman, but just for tonight, I need you to turn back into Diana Prince. I'll never forget that. And my aunt then got on the phone and she was like, look, I've never seen your father like this and I've been married to him for over 20 years and I've never seen him cry like this. The reason that I bring this up is because this is not just how black parents feel sometimes. This is how black parents feel all the time. All the time being scared that their children won't come home. Constant terror. Every day. Every day. I've been thinking a lot about the humiliation that comes with not just being a black protester, but that comes with being a black parent. I think about how humiliating it must have been to my dad to have to call his adult child crying and begging them to come home. I think about how humiliating it was to be protesting with my hands in the air, to be on one knee before police officers in full riot gear, to be on my knees before the National Guard, which I served in for five years of my life, begging for my human rights. A lot of people have messaged me to say, oh, like, you're so strong, you're so brave, I look up to you, and I appreciated those messages, but I've never felt more powerless in my entire life. I've never felt more humiliated or degraded as I felt when I was marching in those streets. 
a lot of you would message me at the end of the night and just make sure that I had gotten home safe and um, I, I received a lot of really really touching messages from y'all saying well you know like I can't sleep until I see that you've uploaded to your story and confirmed that you're home safe and that's so touching but also as a black person in America I'm never safe got into a really heated conversation with my mom when she was like I just want you to be at home I would prefer you were just making YouTube videos and protesting that way and not put you know out there putting your life on the line and I had to be like mom look Ayanna Stanley Jones was seven years old. She was sleeping in her own home at age seven when she was shot in the head by police. Breonna Taylor was asleep in her home when police fired 28 rounds into her home, shot her eight times. I can be killed at home. I'm not safe anywhere. And these are not two isolated instances. There have been numerous incidences of police getting the wrong house, getting the wrong information, showing up to a house of a person that they think is a drug lord and lo and behold, they're the average tax paying citizen and killing black occupants of that home. This is not something that happens infrequently in this country. So I can be killed right here. And also that knowledge, that knowledge that I don't even have the right to defend myself. As somebody that was in the service for five years and as somebody who went to uh, gun ranges in high school, I know my way around a firearm. I don't even have the right to defend myself against home invasion. Out of the seven deadly sins, pride is definitely mine. And it's been hard as a prideful person knowing that there's nothing I can truly do to be safe in this country that I love. My mama and my abuela raised me to walk around with my head held high. And so having to cower my head before police who are supposed to be there to protect me, who my taxpayer dollars go into supporting, is degradation on the ultimate level. Somebody had gotten a hold of my Amazon wish list and found a way to send me this mask. And I, I don't know if this was supposed to intimidate me or scare me or, or if it was supposed to be a joke or what the purpose of this mask was. But I just wanna to say to whoever sent this to me, the full weight of the police force, the full weight of the National Guard couldn't scare me into silence. And this can't either. How much will you charge for your allyship? How much will it cost black people to have your support? Will the cost be a human life? Will the cost be that we have to sit here for hours on end, holding your hand, patiently swallowing our own feelings, our own emotions in order to educate you so that you can grow? Or are you going to take it upon yourself to do that work yourself? How much will your allyship cost the people that you are trying to defend? And that's something that I want all of my non-black allies to think about. Um, I want my non-black allies to think well in advance what they're willing to do in support of black people. Are you willing to have that uncomfortable conversation with your family members? Are you willing to do everything in your power to defend our lives? Are you willing to stop supporting your favorite company when they come out as having racially prejudiced policies? Are you willing to stop supporting book outlet when they show that they are not willing to show up not only for black lives, but also that they are upholding this image that black lives are not family friendly? Are you willing to make even the smallest of sacrifices in order to support what you believe in? Or are you only going to do it when it's easy for you, when it's easy for you to tweet Black Lives Matter and then walk away, but you're not gonna check your racist uncle or your racist coworker. You're not gonna break up with that boy, that really cute boy who has a really bad habit of saying the N-word. You're not gonna say anything when your favorite companies have influencers that are all white or who are all light-skinned. What are you willing to do for your allyship? What are you willing to do for black lives? Are you willing to look at your subscription feed and think, hey, a lot of white people on here. Where do black people at? I'm unable to celebrate this milestone that I've been fighting for, which is my channel hitting 10K. I've been fighting to hit 10K for quite some time. And I had all these things planned that I wanted to do when I got to this milestone. And I can't now because I know that the reason that I'm at 10K is because now it's trendy to follow black people and I'm concerned that once things get back to business as usual, all of these people are gonna leave. 
right? Once it's no longer trendy or popular to be following creators that look like me, the numbers are gonna go back down again. My Instagram just hit 20K, a milestone that I never thought that my Instagram would be at. How many times over the last two years have you seen initiatives from black booktubers to get people to follow us? How many times have we said, hey, we are getting passed up for opportunities. Hey, we are not showing up in people's subscription feed. Hey, people aren't subscribing to us. Hey, we're not growing as fast as our white counterparts. Hey, dark-skinned black people are not growing as fast as their light-skinned black counterparts. How many times have we had these conversations in the booktube community? How many times have we had these conversations in the bookstagram community? Read own voices, support diverse creators, follow black bookstagrammers and pre-order black people's books and it, took not just one man, but several black people dying, not just George Floyd, but Breonna Taylor, Tony McDade, the barbecue man, all of these people whose lives mattered dying before people were willing to follow us, before people were willing to buy our books. I called my favorite independent bookstore the other day so that I could pre-order uh, The Vanishing Half, so I could pick up a copy of The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. Um, and I had, I had inquired about some other books by black authors and they all were out of stock. They all were out of stock because so many people were buying them that the distributor had to print more copies of these books. And that's great. It's it's great that these books are finally getting the love and attention that they deserve. All of a sudden we have all these black authors on the New York Times bestselling list. Why did it take a man dying for people to realize that these works have merit. These books could have been on the best-selling list without the cost of black lives. And so you have to ask yourself if you're truly an ally, if you wait until a death occurs in order to show up. You can't demand that black people just simply be grateful for your presence. We're not playing, we'll take what we can get. I demand that my allies be here for my life as well as my death. I demand that my allies show up for my joy, for my business, for my livelihood. And all black people demand the same. Don't just show up when there's a body bag. Don't just show up at our funerals. Don't turn a blind eye to minor police infractions of brutality and then suddenly be outraged when we're finally killed. I think a lot about the smaller run-ins that I've had with law enforcement. Run-ins in which I wasn't physically brutalized in any way, but I was terrorized. I think about the times that I've been followed home by police. I think about how I was pulled over by police two times in one day. And, and one of the officers didn't even bother telling me why I was being pulled over. He just immediately asked for my license and my proof of insurance. I think about the terror that I've experienced with police. Not just the terror that I've experienced, but other black people as well. Almost every black person has a story of lower level brutality with law enforcement. People wait until there's an undeniable video of the brutality that we know exists in order to be upset. We need to be upset well before then. We need to stand up to these infractions before it escalates to the point of murder. I'm great that these new followers are here, but I have to ask myself, how many times did you scroll past my profile, watch a video because it was trending, but not subscribe? How many times did you think about supporting me, but didn't? because it wasn't popular to do so. All right, before I move into talking more about being black in the book community, as well as what's going on with Book Outlet, I wanted to kind of publicly address this open letter to the book community that I wrote and posted on my Twitter, just for those who haven't seen it, for those of you who don't follow me on Twitter. It was the flood of support I received from this community and my amazing black father that gave me the strength to continue marching after I was gassed. Nothing short of death would have truly kept me from continuing to protest but knowing I was never alone for so much as a moment because of you, because of this community, was air in my lungs. You kept me strong. You carried me. I have seen book community members proudly tweet their refusal to lift a finger to help Black lives survive. I have seen fake allyship and allies who centered themselves for attention. But I have also seen our community knit itself together. My DMs have been flooded, absolutely flooded with profound messages. I have seen black people's books go out of stock because they're flying off the shelves. That said, I am deeply disturbed. It took George, Brianna, Tony, and David being murdered for non-black readers to start showing up for black authors and black readers. 
How many times have we seen initiatives to follow black creators that resulted in our numbers barely increasing? How many times did you scroll past requests to follow black creators before George Floyd was murdered? Continue buying black authors, not just black women, but black non-binary authors and black men and follow black book community members. Do not follow because it's trendy. Do not leave us the second supporting us is no longer popular. I could not have dreamt the support I've received during this time. My gratitude is a C. I ask you support other black folks, black creators and authors with the same vigor you have supported me for the rest of your lives. Being an ally is a lifelong commitment. It is constant self-work, listening and admitting your inevitable mistakes and continuing to support even when it's uncomfortable for you. With love and gratitude, Jesse, Bowties, and Books. I'm not interested in being the token black community member that you follow. I am part of a rich, bold, and dynamic community that has so much to offer, and I have value beyond my racial commentary and my ability to educate. I have value as a human being. And I wanna kind of circle back to discussing the types of businesses that we support. In terms of book outlet, I have never ordered from them. Something has always held me back. When they recently were criticized about the lack of black influencers they have in their program, they released a very, very tone deaf statement, essentially saying, well, we would love to have more black faces in our influencer program. However, we're a family friendly business essentially saying that black creators are not family friendly. And then thankfully, Naya of Naya Reads and Smiles then terminated her contract very publicly with Book Outlet and Kayla of Books and Lala publicly tweeted and said, hey, I swear all the time on my channel, what are you talking about family friendly? And so we've definitely noticed not just with Book Outlet, but in other facets of everyday life that black people are demonized for doing the same things as white people when black people swear it's suddenly extra vulgar, right? white people can still swear on their platforms and be family friendly because respectability politics unfortunately is alive and well and if you're not familiar with respectability politics and what that means i posted an instagram post all about it recently and i'll leave that link down below i was really proud of naya for both terminating her contract with book alpha and saying look i'm a black person and i'm not down to support this and saying look i don't support this and I will not allow you to use my platform, to use me as your token black person so that you can look good. And I was really, really proud of her for doing that. And I also really loved that she said, look, I should have looked into what this company was about well before there ever became an issue. And that really hit home for me because I don't have the privilege of having any sponsorships, but if somebody does want to work with me, really in any capacity, I always say to them, yes, I would love to work with you. However, I need to make sure that you're using my proper pronouns. I'm gender neutral. I'm agender. My pronouns are they, them, not she, her, hers. And if you were going to use my platform in any way, shape, or form, you need to use proper pronouns for me, right? That's something that's that I'm very transparent about. When YouTube reached out to me in order to film an interview with Brian Stevenson, the author of Just Mercy, I told them flat out I said look I would love to do this but I'm non-binary and if I show up to this I need my proper pronouns to be used at all times and in any time that you refer to me and YouTube was so gracious and they had absolutely no trouble respecting that and I bring this up because we all need to be doing the same, right? Anytime you sign up for a company, for a subscription service, anytime that you think about accepting merchandise from a company, you and I, myself included, need to look into what that company actually stands for. Are they promoting all white faces? Are they making problematic statements? Are they silent when black lives are in danger? Are they showing up for people of color? Are they showing up for black people that are in need? And so, and I know it can be uncomfortable because a lot of people are like, I don't wanna make it about politics. You know, I don't wanna have to do all that work before I sign up for a service. Look, we're past that. We're past that. The world is on fire and we no longer have the privilege of not being political. For those of you who are watching who are allies to black folks, even if you are people of color yourself, if you are, are non-black and you are an ally to black people, we are asking you to do one thing and one thing only to say black lives matter. Don't just think it silently, but say it out loud and to stop supporting people that don't support us. As black people, we do not have the privilege of allowing our white allies to stay silent, our non-black allies to stay silent. It costs us too much. The cost of your silence is my life. We can't afford it. 
I can't afford your silent support. My future son can't afford your silent support. So yes, you need to get political. Yes, you, it, it's gonna be uncomfortable and that's okay. Your uncomfortability is not going to kill you, but your silence might kill me. So yes, before you sign up for that subscription service, you send an email and you say, hey, what are your company values? Do you have influencers of color in your programs? Or you look at their Instagram, you look at their socials, you look at who they're following. Are they following Donald Trump on Twitter, for example? We can no longer wait until a company shows their hand as having being part of white supremacist institutions and then react. We need to know well in advance. If each and every one of us takes the time to start looking and paying attention to, to what kind of people that these companies are supporting by stalking their social media, then they won't catch us off guard. A lot of black creators came out after book outlets showed their hand as not being friendly to black folks. A lot of black creators came out and were like, yo, these are my experiences with book outlet in the past and showed screenshots of book outlets saying very problematic things to them, denying them to be part of their program, saying that they would get back to them and never doing it. And it's also not just that these creators are just now talking about it, it's that people are just now listening. So basically my point is, if you are going to take the time to sign up for a subscription service or to follow a company or a brand, you also need to do at least two minutes of research. And I'm guilty of this too. And so this is also like me being accountable. I'm going to leave some resources down below of businesses that are black friendly, as well as a list of books that I have read that are anti-racist books and that I think everybody should read. These are going to be a combination of nonfiction books, such as Open Season by Ben Crump. This is a book that I'm heavily promoting. It's about the various ways that genocide has been legalized against black people in the United States. Very, very important material and it's by a black male author. A lot of people are supporting black women authors and marginalizing black men authors. So make sure that you buy books by black men. Um, and also I recently found out that he is representing George Floyd's family, which is fantastic. I messaged Amistad Books, the publisher, and asked them if they would like to do a giveaway for this book because I wanna get this book into more people's hands. So uh, definitely follow me on Instagram and stay tuned for that. Fantasy where black girls are going on adventures and saving the world and not constantly having to fight racism all day, every day matter too. I will also say it's always important to talk about colorism and light skin privilege when we talk about trying to grow as a black influencer or a black person in the book community. I definitely have noticed that pe black folks with lighter skin are the ones to grow the most. And I know that I enjoy a certain level of privilege within the black community, especially within the black book community because of the way that I speak, because of the fact that I'm thin, because of the fact that I have a medium skin tone. And I'm definitely mindful of the ways in which my privileges have allowed me to grow to 10K. But I'm also aware that, and I'm just gonna be perfectly honest, like I'm just gonna say it, I should be well over 10K. I have no problem saying that because I know I work hard on my content. I've had the privilege to be a part of so many amazing projects such as Blackathon, such as filming a YouTube original episode, such as the BookTube Awards, and the BookTube Awards for 2019 is still coming. Myself and the co-hosts are going to try to get the video up the award ceremony up by July or August at the latest. The BookTube Awards is another really fantastic example of how difficult it is to get people to recognize black folks in this community. I'm actually not going to be hosting the BookTube Awards in 2020 because I said last year, I said in 2019, if only light skinned and white people win these awards, I will stop hosting them. And last year, as y'all were voting, I was looking at the voting polls and I was like, look, I'm seeing a lot of non-black people getting votes and we have a lot of black creators in our community that aren't being shouted out. And so I posted a call out on Twitter and people still continued not making ethnically diverse recommendations. And the only reason I didn't cancel the BookTube Awards is is because you got, so many of you guys donated money for the award packages. I will have the award ceremony out of respect for those of you who donated money, but I will not be hosting the awards in 2020 because I'm not hosting an award show for white readers and white readers only. We're not doing that. But again, another great example of how there was an opportunity to uplift black creators 
and y'all failed. To be black in the book community is to be continuously disregarded. And I just ask that those of you who are non-black, who are just now starting to follow these black voices, that you not only be following us because it's trendy and that you only not be following us so that we can educate you or so that you can get the black perspective. Follow us because we have great content, because you like our energy, because you like the kinds of books we like to read. You have to find something about us to like other than the fact that we're black. My blackness is not the best or even the biggest thing about me and it never will be. This is not an invitation for a bunch of you to comment down below and be like, oh, I don't see color. You don't even seem black to me. I just noticed you were black. Don't do it. Live it. Don't do it. So that's gonna do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And I can't wait to see you in my next one.